If your friends ever peer pressure you into spelunking, don't you dare cave. <laughs> it is better to wear dad jeans and have people think you're buttless than to wear skinny jeans and remove all doubt. <laughs> A hard truth I've learned recently is that owning a full Quidditch set doesn't increase the amount of people willing to play Quidditch with you. <laughs> Are you awing? Does that mean you want to play Quidditch with me? <laughs> I'll take that as a no. Okay. Uh, so sometimes I think it'd be super cool to have superpowers, but then I remember I have the power to get out of bed after my first alarm. And I don't know what makes me think I would use skills that take even more effort. Uh, so, back in, back in high school, my friends Josh, Dan, and I would sneak food into theaters competitively. Uh, we figured the worse the movie was, the better the snacks had to be. So naturally, our championship food-sneaking movie was Transformers 3, Dark of the Moon. Which, by the way, I found out last night, it's called Dark of the Moon, not Dark Side of the Moon. It's like, whoever was working with Michael Bay was like, it's cool, your audience can't read anyway. <laughs> and as a proud member of that audience, I am a fan. Uh, so the three of us, we, we thought we were some smooth criminals. We thought we were entering Ocean 16 when our moms dropped us off at the theater. <laughs> You know, Josh went in, gangsta wobbling like a real crip, wearing, rocking some saggy jeans like he just tripped out of Compton, because he did. Dan was swishing his hair like he's on Baywatch, wearing a neon windbreaker like he just time traveled from 1994, which he might have. And I was there, walking, looking like my mother dressed me, because she did. So we get in, we sit in the very back of the theater, and uh, right as soon as, the, as soon as the lights go down, I whip out a vacuum-packed bag of nerds from my jacket, from the lining of my jacket, you know, just in case they patted me down. Because trying to sneak in nerds is like trying to sneak in a frickin' rain stick. But then, uh, then Dan, not to be outdone, extends his arm with a flourish, opens the elastic on his windbreaker, and pulls out a 13-inch Quiznos sub sandwich <laughs> out of both sleeves. It was like a magician's scarf that just kept going and going. If scarves tasted slightly better than Subway. <laughs> and that should have been a winning move. That should have been the end of it. But then Josh begins what I imagine to be the early 1800s version of a striptease. <laughs> Just starts rolling up one pant leg, real seductive leg. <laughs> and instead of getting some of that sweet, sweet ankle action, we got distracted by the two liter of soda strapped to his calf. We thought the lean was a style choice. It was purely functional. The man had cups. Luckily, the THX logo came on right then and just deafened everyone in the room because we cheered. In that moment, he was a god to us. He was, he was Achilles in the battlefield, Odin in the judgment seat, and Morgan Freeman in the sound booth all at once. And that was originally the end of this joke. But uh, after I pitched it for the first time, our cameraman, cameraman Josh, which by the way, can we give it up for cameraman Josh real quick? <laughs> that is applause well spent. <laughs> cameraman Josh heard that joke and his ego popped up like a wounded pufferfish and just like, hey, I could do better than that. I could beat that. And then he takes me to the worst movie you can find, Mortal Engines. <laughs> Did any of you see Mortal Engines? Zero people. All right. Mortal Engines.
Legends is about cities that eat each other. And it would have been one of my favorite movies of all time if it didn't say words. Because the story was fascinating, the visuals were amazing, but the dialogue was written by taking every young adult novel, putting it in a blender, and using only the dross that floated to the top. <laughs> Like, uh, my favorite way to describe Mortal Engines is cinematic fondue. It was a steaming, cheesy mess that, that people in the 70s would have loved, but you all are too squeamish to try. <laughs> so he takes me to Mortal Engines, we sit in the back, and right as the movie's starting, he opens his, his jacket Clark Kent style, but instead of revealing hope, it's a cinch bag full of sushi. <laughs> And as we're, handing, as we're handing chopsticks to our dates, who we had brought but hadn't warned in any way, <laughs> we were almost able to ignore the strong, violent female protagonist saying, you know, if you go in there, there's no going back. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, uh, and then Josh, pulls not one, not two, but four Kool-Aid bursts from his socks. <laughs> and he offered me one as I was drizzling a balsamic vinaigrette over the salad I snuck in my hat. <laughs> and I said, cameraman Josh, you a grown man uh, sneaking Kool-Aid into a theater. You look stupid. <laughs> But it's, it's not all about pointless pageantry. It's not all about one-upmanship. It's about principle, okay? Movie theater food is the second most cost-inflated substance on this planet, <laughs> right in between insulin and printer ink. <laughs> we are millennials, dang it. It is our purpose to take down any industry that fails to adapt to our poverty. <laughs> Look, it was, it was either I sneak in my own food or I chase out the candy counter workers with a bullwhip. So, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, I found out recently that I came by my dishonest theater practices honestly. Uh, back in the 80s when my parents were newlywed, like long enough to have a kid but still brief enough that they go to the movies just to cuddle. Uh, they're, they're in the back of the theater. My dad thinks he's about to start cuddling but right before the creature from the Black Lagoon goes ooga booga or whatever scared people in the 80s. <laughs> My mom pulls out fajitas. <laughs> Skillet and all. They weren't wrapped in anything. <laughs> to this day, she won't reveal how she got them in there. <laughs> My dad's like, you didn't tell me you were gonna bring fajitas. <laughs> you didn't ask. <laughs> I'll save this fried chicken for the credits then. <laughs> and I love that story. I love that story. Don't you love hearing stories about when your parents were people and not parents? <laughs> it's like, just, just last week, I saw a picture of my grandpa doing a handstand on top of a telephone pole. Yeah, I was like, what? Shouldn't you be eating black licorice and telling me what a handsome young man I am? <laughs> Not being an absolute madman who risks his life because his coworker said the 1940s version of, you won't. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to be doing. You're making me look bad. You spent your 20s being ridiculously shredded. I spent mine telling jokes and drinking Kool-Aid bursts from another man's sock. 